Thanks to the supporters of channel member Fire Soul. Oh, folks, very exciting stuff. Requester kit has absolutely knocked it out of the park again. Look at these. These are the custom kits that we're going to be using for this save. Uh, the home kit, the red one, is the one that is going to be available for you to buy soon as a replica kit where we'll be, we'll be splitting the proceeds with Wembley FC to throw some money back their way as a thank you for letting us use their badge on the kits. Um, I'm not actually using them in this episode because I've spent several days in real life. In fact, today I'm down at Wembley FC doing some filming for future episodes and um, so I've had to record this in advance so the, the FM versions weren't ready when I recorded. I think they're probably ready now though. If they are there'll be a link to them down in the description below. We should have them available to use in tomorrow's video and like I say soon ish. I mean, these things do take time, um, but at some point in the next few weeks, I would like to think you will be able to start placing orders for the home kit if you want to get yourself a Wembley replica shirt as well. And doesn't it look lovely? Request a kit. They, they know their way around a football kit, that's for sure. Welcome to part six of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in the league. Two away games, Flackwell Heath and Milton United. Since you were last with me, um, we've had a little bit of a wobble form-wise. Um, partly because we had to go away from home against top of the table Rainers Lane. Um, who they, I mean, they were top of the table at the time. They seem to have dropped points since, so that's less of an excuse. More of an excuse is that the transfer window opened after all. 1st of January came around and all of a sudden we were able to do transfers. Um, we're not going to have a transfer window that has closed, so we're still able to do transfers now. But it was around about this time that we lost star man Emmanuel Obama-Kimwa, as you would expect we would, because he wasn't under contract. He was also unhappy because I was too lenient in a team talk. And as soon as someone offered him a contract, he left. So he then lost against Hilltop, who were not great. That one was... that one was upsetting and a draw against Harefield United away from home also not great but we did finally get back to winning ways against Virginia Water who are around near us in the league so that was a decent result and the one positive to come from this January run as you can see Anton Canerva benefiting from Warren being injured getting a little bit of a run in the team and starting to score goals Canerva has got five goal four goals in his last six matches and an assist in that time as well and is now in the team. So that's a positive. This is what the league table looks like. Um, we're in seventh place, four points outside of the playoffs, um, with Hilltop above us with a game in hand as well. Um, so obviously the board still disappointed in me. They're not angry. They're just disappointed. Chill out, John. Yeah, it is John. Chill out, John. I should probably re John's quite an easy name to remember. I should probably remember that one. Um, but we do need to start putting a run of wins together again to get ourselves into the playoffs at the end of the season. But I mentioned the transfer window is now open. Um, as you can see, club's trying to sign Andreas Nielsen as well, but he's actually under contract, so we can say no to him. Obama Kinwa was a non-contract player, and uh, because of that, he was able to just walk out. He's gone to Cray Valley, who play in the Isthmian League Division 1 Southeast, which is, I think, the tier above where we are currently. He is uh, he's earning actual money, £180 a week. I mean, that's like half of what our... our wage budget is as a club so you can't really argue with him going it did leave us in the lurch a little bit though we've also loaned out some of the fringe players to generate some wage budget they've all gone out for a hundred percent of their salaries um, and we let Alex Donahue go who I mean he was never going to be any good so we've let him go so that freed up some wage budget we've still got some free wage budget so there should still should be more players coming in with there being no transfer window at this level we can sign players all the way through to the end of March when the when transfer deadline day happens this is not my fault because I've been within all my budgets this is just the deep lower leagues on FM. That always happens. But we have signed two players, two fullbacks. Josh Gray is a 22-year-old English right back with five stars of current ability. Came in to replace Obama Kinwa as best player at the club. He's only played one game, um, but I am excited to have him here. And likewise, Mark Johnston is a left back with five stars of current ability. A right-footed left back. you got to sometimes, haven't you? Um, who's 
played for various clubs around Northern Ireland, but has decided now is the time to come and hang out in London and is here at Wembley and has also played just the one game for us. So we've got a couple of fullbacks, so we don't have to play the kids at fullback anymore. And now we're just going to go through and start to strengthen the rest of the team, probably starting with either our defensive midfielder where we've only got George Brush um, or goalkeeper where Charlie Whelans, who strangely, he's also not under contract, but no one's come in and taken him away from me. Don't know why. No comment. But at £20, £25 a week for players, we've probably got room for another two, maybe even three to bring in. So we'll be, we'll be continuing to crack on with that. I'll level with you. I wasn't ready when it happened because I thought we weren't going to sign players this season. I misunderstood. What a silly goose. So we're playing Flackwell Heath. Let's go and find out a little bit more about Flackwell Heath which is out near Wickham. There you go. There they are on the map. That's High Wickham. This is Flackwell Heath, which is an actual place. And I imagine that green rectangle is Flackwell Heath Football Club. There you go. I mean, it looks like the centrepiece of, I want to say, the village. Um, it looks like fairly decent facilities, actually. Can we... Uh can we get close enough to see? We can't. The roads don't get close enough. We'll come down here. I think that's probably the the entrance to the football ground. That's somebody's driveway. Is that the entrance to the football ground? It's a weird way in. I think we go through that gate. It's basically in this guy's garden. No wonder he's had his number plate blurred out by Google Maps. Is there any other way we can try and have a look at this football stadium? I mean, it looks like... There's buildings and a bit of a car park, but no roads that go anywhere near it. I'm not sure what this is. They've had a they've had a little bit of a problem cutting the grass there. It seems. Can we try and see it from the other side? Are we going to be able to see it from from the main road? Maybe from here, we'll be able to peer through if we have a look there. So it that's the bin men. It's bin day. So it's through there somewhere. That's as close as we're going to get. Blackwell Heath. And this is the team we're sending there. Whelan's in goal, a back four of new boys, Johnston and Gray at fullback, Nielsen and Antwi centre back, and then Martin and Brush in midfield, Pierce and Hamilton, then behind Garrick and Canerva. Hopefully, we get another good performance from Canerva, who, like I say, is in the goals now, starting to fulfil some of that potential that he's had all along, and hopefully can put in a little bit of a show for you lot today. Frankly, we need it because that little that little wobble we had in January, I think I mentioned in the last episode, that teams at this level just seem relentless with their constant winning, and uh, it has remained the case. And because we had a wobble and no one else did, we've now fallen off the pace a little bit. Uh, Johnston, the new boy, has just given away a penalty there, which is not ideal. But Whelan's has saved it. Maybe someone will come in for him now. He's saved a penalty. I always rated him as a goalkeeper what a man what a penalty save and he's got new boy Johnston out of trouble there cross comes in Whelan's upset it I mean it was effective and now Don Pierce looking to get a counter attack going for us but the highlight just ends Hamilton though there to nod on to Canerva if you can get there before the defender we've got a counter attack on here it is Canerva plays it into Garrick Garrick with the shot but the goalkeeper is able to push it around the post but that was a nice pacey counter attack still less than five minutes on the clock and we've had end to end stuff it's like a basketball game going on here today uh, but it's now a free kick to Flackwell and they They've done a little bit of a fancy one. They've not just lumped it into the area the way they're supposed to, which we're in tier nine. I'm offended that they haven't just got that in the mixer. And I think that goal should be disallowed, frankly, for cheating. What is this? That's, I mean, that's that at this level, that's cheating. That's worse. That's worse than an FFP infringement at, at tier nine doing fancy stuff like that. It shouldn't be allowed. Goodness me. One nil down with, We've got a lot to do here. Flackwell looked like a decent side and I thought we'd given away another penalty there. 
My word. Cross comes in again and Whelan's just lets it fly past him. And uh, luckily the, uh, the shot ends up going over. It's a corner now to Flackwell. It's been all Flackwell Heath so far. And the corner is sort of cleared, but there's no one there to relieve any of the pressure. So it's back with Flackwell who are going to look to get the ball back into the area again. And we are we are struggling at the moment. This is, I mean, we're missing Obama Kimmel. We've not replaced him. We've lost our best centre-back, brought in two full-backs, which we did need. But we need an experienced body at centre-back now, especially with Nielsen starting to attract attention as well. Canerva now brings the ball down nicely on the edge of the area, finds Hamilton, now Pierce and Don Pierce. What a player. Luckily, no one's come in for him yet. The youth players, we have got the advantage of the fact that they're on two-year youth contracts. They are a little bit harder to steal. Nielsen, for example, out of contract at the end of the season, like all of the senior players, and we're not offering contract extensions to anybody. It's tier nine. We'll review contracts in the summer. If that means we lose a few in the meantime, fair enough. But these youngsters, they have got the longer contracts and that could end up being handy. Hamilton, we've seen score a few of these this year. Hamilton from range and this one goes just over. But we're clawing ourselves back into this game after an iffy start. And... Um, we uh, we obviously got the equaliser. We're creating a couple of chances and hopefully we can settle ourselves down and, and push on and get a result today because we can't afford to drop any more points. There's starting, to be, there's starting to be a gap form above us. I don't think, if we were to finish top half, I don't think I'm going to be fired because although the board are disappointed, they're not angry and they're happy with everything else that we're doing. But... Obviously, we would quite like to not disappoint the board ever. Um, new boy Johnston at fullback gave away a penalty and has now made the mistake. So he's been directly responsible for both goals. I mean, I would argue that's not much of a mistake. He's just kind of tried to move his face out of the way of the ball. I guess he could have he could have kept his face in the danger area. I'd have moved my face as well. I don't want the money maker damaging. So. I would absolutely be moving my face out of the way of a fast-moving football, just like Johnston did. Whelan's pushing it behind for a corner. Um, apparently, Hamilton nearly scored an own goal there as well. We are, we are chaotic defensively today, is the best way to describe it. And we are going to need to get ourselves a new centre-back relatively urgently and get ourselves promoted up through the leagues relatively quickly as well. So the aliens will go away because... This, we obviously had this in the early stages of non to legend this year. Once we got to the bigger stadiums, not a problem. Um, but down in these small stadiums, it is a problem still, despite multiple patches. Bring on FM25, new match engine. Surely they're not going to code the aliens back in again. So if they're not going to fix it, which it's pretty clear at this point, they're not going to fix it. Um, at least... At least it shouldn't be in next year's game because it's not going to be on the same engine. Right, Pierce has got a little bit of space. Finds Canerva, who's hit the post. I mean, the way he's been playing and scoring lately, you you put your house on him finding the back of the net, yet, net there, but unfortunately, comes back off the post, remains 2-1 to Flackwell Heath, and we really don't need another defeat because this would be three defeats in five games, and that is not... Good form. That's football analysis there. Um, can we get Obama Kimwa back? Because we desperately need him. We cannot defend without him. Even though, theoretically, I mean, I obviously can't see the current abilities and whatnot, but I would argue the back four overall probably has a higher average ability now without him. But my word, we're missing him. We need, we need a, a steady head at centre-back to replace him. Fullbacks are all well and good, but clearly don't make that much of a difference, do they? Right, we're going to go attack and we're going to demand more. This is this is not going very well, and we've got a corner kick. It's Johnston playing it over, looking for Nielsen. The Flackwell player gets there first and has managed to get it clear. And I mean, why can't we defend corners like that? Every time we had a ball, cut, oh now Pierce has been sent off. Oh, it doesn't rain; it pours. I hate it when football manager just decides to pile on. Things are going a little bit iffy. So it's like, yeah, well, I'm going to get you. I'm get Oh, you're struggling a little bit. I'm coming for you. Just, just, just let us have an average time. We had a 16 match unbeaten run. 
And rather than going from a 16 match unbeaten run to uh, win a bit, lose a bit, draw a bit, we've literally gone 16 match unbeaten run straight into rubbish. Just like it's like a like a switch has been flicked. And the really frustrating thing for most of that 16 match unbeaten run, Obama Kinwell was unhappy. He had seven players supporting him. So he had a bit of a player mutiny going on. The moment the player causing the mutiny leaves, our form evaporates. It, there's not even a, a flow of logic to it. We have got a goal back here through Warren, who is fit again. He ended up missing about five weeks with that injury he picked up in the last episode. But as you can see, he is back um, coming off the bench there for Garrick and grabbing a goal. And I mean, if we can grab an equaliser here, all things considered, a draw in this match would be a good result. What is Whelan's doing there? That is the worst goal kick anyone's ever done. Just puts us under so much unnecessary pressure. And we're going to concede again because of it. Okay, he's actually he's, he's redeemed himself there with a decent piece of goalkeeping. He's actually had quite a good game just based on previous. I've got it in for him. <laughs> As mentioned in the intro, I'm down at Wembley today. If he's there, it's going to be awkward. This is why we didn't have all of the real life players in. <laughs> because I've got to be able to be honest about him. And Digital Whelan's really frustrates me. He'll probably tell me that's not how you even say my name, boss. I'd like to think he'll call me boss in real life like he does in Football Manager. A little bit disrespectful if he doesn't. Um, right, Black is going to come on as the final change. We're going to go very attacking. Black is probably the most hard done by by these transfers as well because I think I described him before as the unsung hero who doesn't have much of a star rating but always plays well in the match engine. So what do I do? Bring in a fancy left back over the top of him because left back was showing as having a low star rating on the squad planner. I should listen to the own, my own words that come out of my actual mouth sometimes. Oh, my word. Right, come on. Have we got an equaliser? Please, have we got it? We really would like an equaliser. We can't lose again. We've got another away game coming after this as well. We've struggled away from home all year. The, the little bit of good form that we've had has largely come from our excellent home form. So away games have always been a challenge. And when we're in rough form... And we've got consecutive away games. It's not It's not ideal. I don't think we've even got time before the next match to bring in a new defender because I think it's only three, get three days away. Uh, okay. We need to scurry back to within the M25 where it's safe. Every time we come out here near the grass and the trees, we lose. I don't like it. We're afraid of trees. This is going to be five now, isn't it? It's going there. And it's going to be very upsetting because it's non-league. He shouldn't be able to stick it there. He's going to, though. Oh, a shenanigans free kick. Of course it was a shenanigans free kick. I've got a set piece, coach. Why are we not doing that? Because that's so easy. And there is no way for me as the manager... To tell him to do something like that, that is completely on the set piece coach. And ours, I think, I mean, what's he for? Just eats all the twiglets out of the vending machine and doesn't teach us how to do set pieces. Ah, right. That's been rubbish. Um, who are we playing now? Is there any chance that we might be able to beat them? Don't worry, I have a plan. We're bringing in trialists. A million pound defender, anybody? 44-year-old Wayne Thomas keeps the uh, keeps the no surnames thing going. Was once transferred from Burnley to Southampton for a million pounds. He hasn't played since 2018. Uh, over 500 games largely in the Football League. He's better than most of our defenders as well. Uh, Luke Steele, former Peterborough United and Manchester United goalkeeper who's now a striker. It is the same Luke Steele. If you have a look at his career stats, it is the youngster who left Peterborough, went to Manchester United, was a goalkeeper all throughout his career until he retired and then started playing for Deeping Rangers who play behind my old house. I used to live here um, like three or four years ago. Um, went there as a striker. 
scored six goals and then became Peterborough Sports Manager in real life, has clearly been given the boot. Um, but we've got him in on trial as a striker at 39 years old. And if we decide not to go for him, how about Daryl Clare? If you played Championship Manager... 20 years ago, you might remember Daryl Clare as the guy who was at Boston United and used to score goals for fun, um, literally in real life. 24 goals, got Boston promoted, but didn't want to give up his day job. So when they got promoted to the Football League, he then opted to drop back down into non-league and play for Chester, where he then got them promoted and did the same thing again and uh, ended up back at Boston and eventually, I guess, did give up the day job briefly. Um, but he was such a lethal goal scorer 25 years ago. Um, hasn't played for over 10 years, but for some reason is still in the database. Maybe. So in the end, I decided signing the old men was probably not the best idea I could ever have. Um, we have, though, continued the no surnames policy. Um, Archie Kieran has come in, who can play anywhere in midfield. He's formerly of Ipswich. Um, we've also brought in Alanre Balogun, who is a striker, five-star current ability striker, um, who's previously done the non-league rounds, um, originally of Dagenham and Redbridge before dropping down into non-league. Um, so he's another five-star current ability player. Um, and we're also trying to bring in a couple more as you can see, we're trying to bring in a couple of goalkeepers, one permanently, one on loan. We're only going to sign one. We'll see if we can get either of them because all of these players are attracting interest from multiple other clubs. Um, we're trying to bring in a centre-back, Paddy Marshall, who's currently in on trial, but as you can see, is wanted by everybody. Same with Ruben Mason. We'd probably only sign one of them, but... I doubt we'll get either. Um, and then just basically looking for views, we're getting a guy who used to play for Hashtag United so we can stick him on the thumbnail, clicky, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But he's also wanted by everybody who's ever played professional football, um, including God Manchester Rovers. I used to work in God Manchester. We're doing a little bit of a tour of places I used to live and work in this episode, apparently. Um, but most of that hasn't gone through in time to play Milton United. So let's go and play Milton United, who are down in the bottom half of the league. They should be beatable, but we have a problem. And the problem is they're even further away from the safety of the M25. Look how far away from London we've got to travel here. We do get past the green bit, though. So hopefully it's not just completely surrounded by grass and trees and things that we're afraid of. Uh, that's a lot of green, isn't it? Um, but there is... Is that a... No, that I thought... I thought that was the football pitch. We can't have a square football pitch. There's the football pitch. I think we're actually going to be able to have a look at this one. If we drop ourselves down onto this road, can we drop ourselves down onto this road? The Google car has not been up there. Where's the closest? The closest we can get to is the main road, but I think we'll still be able to see it from here. Or maybe not. Let's move up this way a little bit to where that cyclist is. There you go. There's the pitch. And... Uh, Looks like a nice little facility. I think that's probably the pitch a little bit further back. Um, but this is the closest view we can get of it. They're getting a Waitrose delivery. That's how you know this is a fancy area. Waitrose delivery. Who'd have thought? Some new, nice looking new builds over there as well. Still far too green for my tastes. I think we're going to get battered. So this is the team. When two new boys are on the bench, Balogun and Kieran. Can't really throw them into the mix just yet. So fingers crossed. We do need another defender, though, as a matter of urgency. Should we just sign Daryl Clare as well to play up front? <laughs> it would be like playing Championship Manager 0102 all over again, with him being the superstar. So I can't believe he's still in the database. That's mad. He's not played oh, for 10 years. There's another one with no surname. None of them have got surnames. Even the ones upsetting me have got no surnames. It's less than a minute on the clock. This lot are in the bottom half of the table. I'd forgotten how upset I was. I've been having quite a lot of fun just looking through scout reports and looking at players and going down memory lane. Then we're back in the match engine and immediately just kicks me in the eye again. Absurd. Right, Hamilton, he's capable of doing the same thing. So let's do it straight back to them. No. Just no. Brilliant. Well... Milton, all the way down here, 
this would pretty much end any hopes we've got at the playoffs, I think. If we if we lose here today, because we'd be eight points adrift and we're into the second half of the season now. That's falling for Garrick, surely. It's just not going my way at the moment, is it? Oh, right. We've got to turn this around. It might be time to uh, to change the tactic because it's clearly not working anymore. Um, Hamilton releases Johnston on the left. I say it's the tactic. It's not. It's the lack of our best player. We've lost our best player and we're suffering for it. Stewart has been fouled there, though. So that's going to be a penalty kick. And it's going to, It's usually Canerva to take. Is it Canerva? I can't see from here. It is Canerva to take the penalty. For goodness sake. Oh, football manager, why do you do this? It's so upsetting the way this happens. We cannot buy a win. We cannot buy a goal. I don't know what we've done. <laughs> Look at the XG. We're the team that's losing. Their XG is 0.02. They had no business scoring that free kick. And they've not had any other shots. But we're the ones losing, despite having had a penalty. Oh, for... Oh. Well, this season has not gone to plan at the moment. There's still a way to go, but in all honesty, like I say, if we don't win here, or certainly if we lose here, any hope of the playoffs is gone. I mean, if we look at that league table, I know there's a highlight going on, but I just don't want to see us concede again. <laughs> Um, this puts us down to 11th place, eight points behind Risborough. We are, we are not making that up. We're not making up that kind of difference the way we've been playing. And we've shown earlier in the year, I mean, we won like eight games out of 10 at one point this season and it still wasn't enough to get us up there. Right, Garrick has got the equaliser. I can't see the linesman, so I don't know for sure it's been given, but they're celebrating and I think that means that it's a goal. So that's 1-1, one, one. it's back on. And this is a team that we should be able to beat. So let's just ignore the fluke free kick that they scored. They've not created anything else. It's a nice finish from Garrick, actually. And um, fingers crossed, we can pull the win out from somewhere and Garrick is injured. So it's going to be an early look at Lanray Balligan. I could have brought Warren on, but I want to look at my new boy. He's six foot two. He's got five stars of current ability. Please be good. If he can come in and actually look like a five-star player, having a five-star striker in the team would be a thing of beauty. Right, it's Johnston with the throw to Hamilton. Back to Johnston again. Cross comes over. Canerva is on it. And Canerva scores. That's a ninth goal of the season for Anton Canerva. He's not going to be intimidated by a new striker coming in. He's just decided it doesn't matter who plays with me. I'm the man. I'm the guy who's going to be the main striker for the next five years at this football club. He's still not even 17 years old and he is finally starting to look like the player that I thought we had at the start of the season. And that gets us right back in this mix. Seventh in the league, 43 points, five points behind Risborough. That is a gap that we can make up. Hamilton with the corner. Um, it's not a very good one. Didn't even beat the first man and it ends up, I was going to say all the way back with our defender. It's actually ended up with the Milton attacker because we've not come across to cover that at all. This is absolutely shocking defending. Um, but Martin is the one who actually comes back and makes the tackle. He started the season as one of our attacking midfielders. Um, he's now starting defensive midfielder doing all the covering Martin plays it forward to Hamilton Hamilton to Johnston who has options if he can just get it into the middle he does Stewart has burst out of midfield and hits the post we are looking like the better team now this is more like it this is like this is a lot more like how I expected today to go that XG tells the story of what we've seen in the first half really we have been the better team by miles and I think we just need to add another one. Let's add another goal and then we can call this job done today. But we know that they can score absurd free kicks. So we one goal difference isn't enough. Johnston's got space to shoot. Here, it comes back off the crossbar. That's our right-footed left back. I think it was a right-footed shot. And it uh, unfortunately wasn't good enough to make it past the Milton goalkeeper. Our old pals Chalfo atop of the league look. 
Who'd have thought? Um, but it's still 2-1. And see, this is, see set pieces. Set pieces are going to worry me. Cross comes in. Whelan's absolutely flaps at it. We should have a new goalkeeper in place for the next episode. You saw before, we've got two of them that we're actively pursuing. Um, and I think the, the Whelan story will be ending there. Um, Stewart plays it into Hamilton. Hamilton turns back to Brush, who's another one that we are looking looking to replace. I love George Brush, but he's not very good at football. He's just got a great name. Um, Brush looking for... I mean, he really isn't very good at football, but he's managed to keep hold of it there. I think that was supposed to be a cross. It ends up with Gray, who plays it into Hamilton, who shoots from range. And I thought that had gone in for a second there, but alas, it did not. We really do need another goal because I am not at all confident with just the one goal advantage based on some of the nonsense I've seen from us this season. And um, We are going to take off George Brush and bring on Kieran uh, to make his debut. He isn't an accomplished defensive midfielder yet, but we've certainly brought him in to play alongside Martin. The plan is not for him to be competing with uh, with the more attacking midfield players where we've got oodles of talent. He is there to do what we've done with Martin and take a more attacking player and convince him to be a defensive midfielder. And that is what we were worried about all along. They get, they've had two chances in this match and they've scored them both. And we're just so wasteful. We desperately need a defender. I don't want to see it. We desperately need a defender. And now we need a winner as well, because this is not okay. We can't drop points here. This team are rubbish. We've seen in this match that this lot are rubbish. Johnson is tired, so Black can come on for him. That's our final change. We're going to go attacking, because we've got to win. We, I want to demand more as well. It's not letting me. Let me demand more. Right, Balogun. First piece of anything we've seen from him. And he's got him through on goal. And oh, he nearly scored a wonder goal completely created by himself. But unfortunately, comes back off the post. We still can't demand more. Did I just do a shout? We're down in 10th place. Come on. We, there you go. Demand more. Two minutes left in the match. Surely someone needs to step up, score a goal, make themselves a hero. We need it. Right, that's Balogun dropping deep, playing it out to Gray, into Kieran now. Kieran. I mean, no one wants to tackle him. Kieran's just trying to do it on his own, and it's pushed wide, I think, by the goalkeeper, and we've got a corner. Into the last couple of minutes of the match, it's going to be Martin to hit an in-swinger. We've got big boys in the middle. Find one of them. Let's do a goal. He's looking for Black at the far post and he can't keep his header down. We've got four minutes of time added on. The three or four Wembley fans roar at the prospect of three or four more minutes and we don't do a highlight and that is more points dropped. That's very disappointing and it all stems back to the goalkeeper and the lack of a proper centre-back and their issues I am going to hopefully have addressed before tomorrow's episode. At least tomorrow we get to wear our shiny new kits. Hopefully I won't get sacked before then. Uh, Garrick's going to be out for six weeks. So that's a big opportunity for Balogun to force his way into the team. And, uh, well, that's not good. That's not good at all. We need to string some wins together. There's not long left in this season. We need to win some football matches. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.